Yo, what's going on? Mike from Mike Talk Sports. Every single year, it's very interesting looking at the Mr. Irrelevant last pick in the NBA draft. And this year, it's Chris Livingston. So let's take a deep dive at Chris Livingston. Let me tell you a little bit about his story, about him as a prospect, his strengths and weaknesses, in order to determine what is Chris Livingston's potential and can he actually carve out a solid NBA career. So Chris has actually been a very notable basketball prospect ever since he was in middle school. Yes, middle school. And going into high school, he was highly touted by most academies in the United States. And he, of course, ended up choosing Oak Hill Academy, which in my opinion is the most prestigious, well-known high school in the entire nation for basketball. Notable prospects such as Carmelo Anthony has come out of Oak Hill. At Oak Hill Academy, he consistently balled out and he was good enough to consistently make the FIBA Americans teams. And at the International FIBA World Championship for 16-year-olds, he ended up winning the entire MVP of the tournament in 2019. This, of course, led Chris to be a highly touted five-star recruit, getting major offers from major college basketball programs. And Chris ended up picking Kentucky to spend his one year in college basketball at. So in his one year at Kentucky last year, he played in 34 games, and in those 34 games, he started 26 of them. He averaged 6.3 points per game, 0.9 turnovers per game, 0.7 assists per game, 4.2 rebounds a game on 30.5% from three on a pretty solid sample size, and shooting 43% from the field in total on about 22.4 minutes per night. So now let's dive into some of his strengths, weaknesses, tendencies, and athletic profile. So Chris is 6 foot 7, 210 pounds, and has a very solid frame. I'd say for an NBA prospect, he has B plus athleticism. He's not necessarily a guy with an insane amount of quick twitch muscle fibers in his body. He's not a guy who necessarily explodes at an A plus level, but he's a very good above average athlete. As you guys could tell in this highlight film playing over this video, he's a great dunker. And again, he has very nice athleticism that absolutely will translate to the NBA. I first really want to touch upon his defense because if he ends up being a good NBA player or even a guy who makes the NBA and carves out a solid career, it'll be because of his defensive prowess. His defensive highlights outright shocked me how good he looked. He's a very high-end wing defender with a really strong frame and a great wingspan. That wingspan is such a strength of his. He's a guy who right away in the NBA can guard two through four, which is such a rare trait for a college basketball player to project as a two through four guy who can not only guard the best wings in the NBA, the best threes, and really, in my opinion, that is the most valuable defender to have, a guy that can guard the Paul Georges, the Kawhi Leonards, the LeBron James of the world. So he has really nice lateral quickness and agility to have the good foot speed to keep up with some of the faster guards and wings in the NBA. Not only that, but he has really nice play strength and he has a really nice anchor down low. So in my opinion, he right away projects into the NBA with being able to guard some of the stronger fours in the NBA. Not only is he a good, smart, heady defensive player when it comes to team defense, but as a one-on-one defender, he has a very nice basketball IQ. And again, those physical traits are absolutely phenomenal, making him a good one-on-one defender. He consistently was guarding the other team's best player and consistently winning defensive reps against those really good college level scores. He's someone who also has a very high motor and high effort. Not only does this show up defensively, but it does show up offensively, as I'll touch upon in a little bit, but something that's so rare out of a defender. So if you're the 60th pick in the NBA draft, let's be completely honest. The whistle will be very short in terms of the leash in the NBA. The NBA, one of the things I hate about it is you absolutely get calls if you're a star player. And if you are the 60th pick in the NBA draft, a fringe NBA player, player, they're going to call a very quick whistle on you. And something that college defenders really struggle with at the NBA level is not getting vertical with their contests. And that's something that he does so consistently. He gets very vertical with his contests, which is so important to not get into foul trouble early on in his NBA career. 
So I'm very confident in his ability to be a good defender right away at the NBA level, but I'm not confident at all in his offensive game. I'll be completely honest. His offensive game is not professional basketball level at the moment. Now, he is a strong, patient driver who's good at attacking the basket with his right hand from the right side of the basketball court. Not only that, but we've seen him do some work running the baseline, having some really nice off-ball cuts to the basket. And again, with that good play strength and that high athletic athletic profile with the really nice wingspan. He is athletic enough to consistently get layups around the rim and get dunks around the rim as well. He consistently initiates contact, which definitely gets him in trouble. He had a lot of charge calls in his one year at Kentucky, but when he initiates contact, he uses his leverage and body very well to get an open floater or to get a open layup. He's pretty decisive once he enters the paint and once he knows he'll score, but he's pretty indecisive when he has to be a playmaker. I already alluded to it. The assist to turnover ratio, not only in high school, but at the college level was honestly absolutely atrocious. Chris Livingston is definitely not an NBA caliber passer. His ball handling is not good as well. You straight up do not want Chris Livingston with the ball in his hands at all the first couple years of his NBA career. If he's going to make it offensively, it's going to be off that jump shot. So looking at his jump shot, his mid-range shot has never been great. Now, you will see some examples in this highlight film of him having a nice mid-range jump shot, but it is that three-pointer that's really going to make or break Chris Livingston because at the high school level, he looked really good shooting the three, a very confident three-point shooter with a quick trigger. Not only that, but he showed really nice NBA range in high school. Now, in college, he's shown some flashes. He's a very streaky shooter. He's definitely had some very good shooting performances at Kentucky, but for the most part, he's some much struggled with his three-point shot. So again, if he makes it in the NBA, it will be as an off-ball player making some threes. If he can shoot about league average on two or three attempts per game, have some nice backdoor cuts, be active on the offensive glass, that's really where he's going to make his mark. Again, he's an outright bad decision maker with the ball in his hands when it comes to playmaking. He's an outright bad passer. And again, his handle is just not good enough. So Chris Livingston, Mr. Irrelevant, is a guy who has a high floor and a high ceiling defensively and offensively. He has a very low floor and somewhat of a low ceiling. I don't project him to ever be that good of an offensive player. Now, it is very interesting to note, I shouldn't have left this till the end of the video, but his agent, Rich Paul, a very famous agent, basically told teams not to draft him because he had a guarantee with the Milwaukee Bucks to draft him. So his agent, Rich Paul, is very confident that the Milwaukee Bucks will be the right organization to develop a talent like Chris Livingston because they already did so with a similar talent in Giannis Antetokounmpo. Overall, I do not have a pro comp for Chris Livingston just because of his offensive game is just not pro caliber yet at the moment, but I do have a really nice pro comp for his defensive profile defensively, he really reminds me of a 2022 version of Andrew Wiggins, who of course was the primary defender of a championship team who consistently used that really nice wingspan, that nice frame, and that nice verticality to consistently contest jump shots. So in my opinion, I do think Chris Livingston makes it in the NBA just because of his defensive floor and ceiling is so high. He just needs to develop a consistent jump shot. I would say two, three, three years into his NBA career. If he's not about a league average to slightly below league average three-point shooter, he'll probably be out of the NBA. All in all, I really love his defensive game though. Thanks for listening, guys. Let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on Chris Livingston and what is his potential at the NBA level?